between my eyes What do the find? Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach if you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of P90X, Atari, Baby Einstein, many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Uh, Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, which helps service professionals, doctors, lawyers, accountants, coaches, consultants, create additional revenue streams, stop just trading time for dollars. Uh, They hold you accountable to achieve your biggest goals with a step-by-step roadmap. Uh, check out rise25.com. It's run by myself and co-founder John Corcoran. It's application only. Definitely check out. We have a download, which is a free dream product ladder, so you can plan your business on one page. All right. Today, I'm very excited. This episode was inspired by Shira Rubin, who is founder of Soul Flight Yoga, who her and her husband are good friends, and she is a raving fan of today's company and products. And so I had to check them out and uh, they are amazing. So I understand why she is a raving fan. And today we have the founder of the Yes Bar, Abigail Wald. And the Yes Bar was born in 2012 in her kitchen in California. And it wasn't some business idea. It was her younger son had a lot of food sensitivities and health challenges. And if anyone's a mom or a dad and you are saying no all the time, and especially with something they want to eat, it's a painful thing. And she wanted to create something that she could say yes to every time. And people can say yes, and she can say yes to the yes bar. And my favorite quote, Abigail, that you've said is, dude, life can suck sometimes, so let's get up and make it good. And the yes bar is making it good. So the Yes Bar, you can get it at yesbar.com, Amazon, and there are 200 stores right now and growing across the country. Abigail, thanks for joining me. Well, thank you so much, Jeremy. I'm excited. I love what you built. So thank, thank you. you for, uh, thank you. Me. Abigail, talk about that. When did the, the partners come in to the picture? So I ran the company um, on my own with my husband's help. Uh, often helping me at four in the morning, uh, doing all sorts of crazy things that you do when you're running a company. Um, And, uh, you know, uh, with two young children, and it was really challenging. And I did that for three years on my own. And then I realized this company wants to grow well beyond what I can make it. Like I had large retailers coming to me wanting to put me in regions of the country, and I had to say no because I didn't have the workforce to sustain it. Um, and, uh, I was told by several people in the industry, like, don't do that until you can really know like what you're getting into and be able to really sustain that retail world. And I knew that I couldn't, uh, at that time. Um, and, but I also knew more people deserve to have yes bars and I knew that, um, more people wanted them. Uh, and they were, they were just growing. Like it's always been, it's never been in yes bar, um, you know, ever a situation where it's like, oh, uh, you know, um, how are we going to drum up business? It's always been, oh, my God, how are we going to manage? Like, which one are we going to say yes to now? Which opportunity are we going to say yes to? Because people have always said yes to the yes bar, which is very exciting. Um, and so... Lesson is just name your product something with yes in it, so they just, no. You know, look, every once in a while, it won't be somebody's cup of tea, but it's just the overwhelming majority of our experiences are just phenomenally positive. Um, I I mean, how can you go wrong? You've got amazing, delicious ingredients, like put together in a beautiful way, in a very conscious, loving way, in like an eco-friendly box. I mean, like, like what's wrong with it? Do you know what I mean? Like, what are you going to say no to? You know? (laughs) No, thank you. (laughs) So, um, so yeah, so we, uh, so the partners, you're saying the... What happened was, as we grew, I realized that um, it was like, it, I liken it to like having a child who's like an incredible softball player, and like you're just kind of not really a softball player. So you go with them for a few years to Little League, and then you're like, okay, dude's got an arm. Like, like I need to like talk to somebody who actually coaches this stuff. Do you know what I mean? Because like, 
I'm not going to take him where he needs to go. It's kind of that kind of feeling where I felt like, yes, bar needs to grow. It needs to grow big and it needs people who aren't sitting there also taking care of their babies all day long. You know, like people who can just full on embrace this and run with it. Um, because at the end of the day, like my passion was about family and healthy eating and I wasn't actually able to sustain my family with healthy eating because I was trying to feed everyone else all the time. And so I realized like, A, I'd gotten off my values, which doesn't make me a, a good spokesperson. Do you know what I mean? I need to live my truth. Um, and also, I need to um, let this fly as high as it wants to fly. So I start, spent a year deciding I'm looking for partners. And I almost partnered three times with three different people. Um, and each time it wasn't quite right. What was no, it? Ever. Um, different, um, you know, maybe a different vision for the company, uh, different, you know, um, uh, I just didn't. I mean, you're like dating for marriage, right? So I'm, I'm curious of what you were looking for and what you saw that didn't resonate. I wanted passion. I wanted people who this was going to be their everything. And I wanted people who got the ethos of the company too, who were going to care about their customers the way I care. I wanted people who it wasn't just going to be a business opportunity. It was, it was a way of life. And, um, ultimately, um, I found, uh, Jeremy and Brennan who are just phenomenal partners. And how I did you find them? Uh, you know, they had come to me years before. They both have a tremendous amount of experience in the food world. Um, uh, Brennan went to Cornell, uh, for the hotel management program. Um, uh, so he's a hotelier, and then, um, he also worked a little bit on the finance side and then helped a few other companies and, um, you know, he had worked with a friend and a baby food company, all, all, had a lot of experience in all in super healthy, um, foods and he himself is celiac. So, you know, he doesn't take gluten free lightly. Um, and he understands living a, a specific life, you know, and, and the values of it. And he's also an incredible chef, just a phenomenal chef. So, um, he's also got a huge love of food. And then I've got Jeremy who is just also so passionate and so heartfelt and such a, such a good, good soul, you know, and, and both of them are just such hardworking people. And Jeremy has, comes with years of experience from Brad's, from Honest, from, you know, um, lots of different wonderful companies that he's worked with and been able to see really big companies and where they've failed and where they've succeeded and where they've, you know, certainly not failed, but, you know, made choices that maybe he wouldn't have made if it were his company. And so he's been able to learn all around um, and has a tremendous amount of experience in the retail world. And um, they are also best friends. And together they had come to me, they had been working for a company, a distribution company, uh, at the time called Green Shoots in Los Angeles. And um, they had come to me at, with, uh, they were working on a deal for Safeway um, at the time that ultimately like never happened um, exactly uh, as planned. Um, and I would not have been able to handle at the time. I was too small. Um, but they had come to me about that and that's how we had met because they were really interested in the bar. And so then a year later, I wound up sort of connecting with them randomly. And then I was like, Hey, you guys. And you know, they looked at everything in the company and they were like, yeah, this is crazy. Let's do this. And they just jumped in and, um, really have fully embraced it. And it's their full time job. And they're just the most wonderful partners I could ever ask for. So what are their roles? What do they do? So Brennan is actually now um, the CEO, and uh, and he really, I mean, they both really um, run everything. Uh, so it's kind of like they're arbitrary assignments, do you know? But um, to some extent, like really, like they own the company and run it with me. And um, Brennan is really great with um, large scale, high end biz dev. So he's really good with business development and you know, connecting with people. He's just a connector. That's what, you know, he's, it's one of his amazing skills. Um, and again, he's an incredible chef and so is Jeremy also an incredible chef. Um, so together in the kitchen, I mean, the three of us, it's just couldn't be more fun. Um, so in terms of developing new products and developing line extensions and, um, there's just so much more to come. Uh, and then in terms of, um, uh, what else in terms of, um, 
you know, uh, Jeremy's amazing with operations, but also in terms of relationships, uh, and they just, they do all the heavy lifting. I mean, they're, they're doing everything, you know, we're a small company, so we all wear all the hats and especially them these days, you know, and I'm still the vision and the heart and sort of brand staying on brand and, um, you know, helping. So we go, what I want to hear, um, some of the challenges along the way some of the things that you were you've experienced and then on the flip side i want to hear some of the the milestones you're proud of but start with some of the the challenges you laugh because there's probably a number of them that really are so many i can't even tell you uh the 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 failures are numerous right and that's okay like um i'm proud of those failures you know they were moments of um, trying to make flavors that didn't work or trying to figure out how the heck could we, you know, make more of these than 10 at a time. What flavors didn't work that looking back is crazy that you tried it? Oh, I really wanted to use some citrus, um, fresh citrus, and it just makes the nuts soggy. Um, uh, you know, they're very temperamental little creatures. You have a few around. I don't know if you could show a few. What you have a few of them. So, um, so here's like macadamia. This is the original macadamia chocolate chip, and this is a mocha cayenne, and here's a black sesame, and here's strawberry coconut, and um, you can kind of see what they look like inside. Um, so this is what a yes bar looks like inside, and we look like um, a cookie because we kind of taste like a cookie, but we've got you know all the functionality of a super healthy snack bar. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, then the packaging, I mean, you know, listen, I, I haven't done anything n- normally. Like if you set out to create a company, you wouldn't put 14 to 22 ingredients in a bar. You'd be like, that's insane. It's not sustainable. But I wanted to have this taste explosion. I wanted to have it be, and I wasn't willing to sacrifice. And I can't tell you how many times, like literally so many people were like, you can't keep using real macadamias. Like, you know that. Or you can't keep using, you know, real vanilla. You can't keep using... You know, why don't you just switch to a different salt? You know, and I was like, because the mineral content in this salt is this, and the flavor of this particular salt is this. And, you know, um, we just never surrendered. And so it was always like, you know, really what it looked like was we would have an idea, and it would, or me, because that was for the first few years, I would have an idea, and it would be, no, no, not possible. No, nobody does it that way. Nobody does the packaging that way. Nobody makes them round. Nobody does this. Nobody does that. And I was like, so how are we going to do it? (laughs) And the answer was, we're not, you're not, you're going to do what everybody else does. And I was like, no, I'm not. So how am I going to do it? (laughs) That's just what it looked like. And it was about like being crazy and believing in myself and believing in these bars really. And, and believing in people that they deserve this. I mean, that was really, wasn't even believing in myself. It was like, I believe that someone should be able to open this up and have it feel like a cookie and eat it and enjoy it. And like, I can't tell you, I know that sounds crazy, but like, that was like my burning desire. So there were so many failures along the way, like this kind of packaging doesn't work and you've got to use the other kind of packaging. Well, I get that, but you know, it's not as good for the environment and it's not, you know, um, it's not as pretty. And I wanted everything to be visually beautiful as well. I wanted, I wanted the whole experience from the beginning to end, from the tactile feeling you get touching the bar to the, to the wrapper, to the look of it, to the kind of ink that we use, you know? Like, I wanted everything to be a positive yes experience. And I all along the way, we were talked out of that. And all along the way, I said no. I said no, this is the yes bar. So, um, yes, there were many failures on that path. Does that make sense? Many. Many. You know? Going against the norm, yeah. I guess. Failed equipment trials, failed flavors, failed co-packing situations, failed, um, you know, at one point we bought like 60 trays of this particular thing that I thought were going to help. And it was like, okay, who wants 60 trays? (laughs) You know, know, I mean, just uh, there were so many different um, failures, so many. So on the flip side, Abigail, the um, business milestones you're especially proud of. After pushing through all those I'm challenges. Proud that we're in. I, I'm proud of our boxes that are um, from sustainable forests. I'm proud of our ink. 
I'm proud of our ingredients. I'm proud that um, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> I'm proud that, you know, when somebody's eating a yes bar, it's like they're in my kitchen and I'm giving them something that I give my own family. Um, I'm proud of my partners. I'm proud of my partners and everything they've laid down for this business. I'm proud of uh, the fact that we treat people kindly. I'm proud of uh, that we've got new ideas in the pipeline. I'm proud of the creativity of my partners. I'm proud of the places that have said yes to us that have allowed us to thrive because we could not have done this alone. Um, so I'm proud of the companies that gave me a chance when I was a mom, like who made this, you know, originally as a snack for my kid, like, and they said, okay, yeah, you can sit on the shelf right next to these big companies. Like, I'm proud of those relationships. I'm proud of everybody who's given us a chance. Thank you, Abigail, for this. Anyway, I really appreciate you telling your story, and this is very inspiring. I want to point, I have one last question. But I want to point people towards where they can find out more. And one is yesbar.com. Any other places we should point people towards? So um, wherever you are that Amazon can get to you, um, you can certainly buy our bars on Amazon. Um, and uh, yesbar.com. And um, you know we're in about 200 stores. You can take a look and see if we're in a store near you. Um, you can ask a store to carry us. Um, but you can always reach us directly at hello at the yes bar.com and that one's at hello at the yes bar.com. Um, and, uh, our website is yes bar.com or the yes bar.com. Either way you'll get to us. Everyone should check out yes bar.com. Last question. I so want to ask about David Letterman, but I'm going to hold back. <laughs> I've been curious this whole time, but, um, Really, what's next for the next for the Jesper? So, so uh, well, first I'll answer your first question, David Letterman. I was on there as a skit, married off to one of the like postal workers that worked in his building or something like that, and they like as some skit married me off to him, and then we uh, were supposed to jump off in a plane because I guess they'd found out I jumped out of a plane. I, I don't really remember. I was like twenty. Um, so some friend was like, do this. And I was like, sure, David Letterman's funny. So, um, that was that. So can we find this episode somewhere? Is it like, oh, like... if you do, let me know. <laughs> I saw, I want to put a video of this at the bottom of this. <laughs> I do not know where it is and I do not have it. Um, I literally like went through and like just dumped out all sorts of things from my past one day thinking I'll never need them. And now I kind of wish I had them, but that was one of the tapes that I remember like, Oh, I'll never look at that again. Yeah. Um, so no, I don't have it. Uh, but, um, what else? Okay. So what's next for us? Um, definitely some new flavors in the works. Um, and we also, um, might do some sort of line extensions as well. Like how we think about the bar, like different functions for the bar. What would be an example? Um, I can't tell you or I'd have to eat I you. Knew, I knew I'd have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they'll be coming soon. They'll be coming soon. And then, um, you know, we're also going to branch out beyond bars as to, to uh, is the vision. You know, we want to, um, you know, this, this world of yes to eating, it's like there's, there's a lot. There's a lot. A lot of room in a lot of places. Um, <laughs> especially for some really talented partners. There we go. Thank you. Most important part of this whole thing is that your son is doing better. And your, it sounds like that's that's great. And that's kind of what started all of this. So I'm, I'm happy about that. And everyone should check out yesbar.com and support the vision and the, the quest and the journey of health and say yes. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy, for everything that you're doing. I think information um, is key. And I think people getting information and feeling empowered to use information and try your own things and do your own science experiments with your family and your body, um, it's really important. And I think we give too much power to other people. And really, we have a lot of power to heal ourselves too. Not always. I'm certainly not going to be doing heart surgery on my older son, but there's plenty of room for us to be healing ourselves as well in tandem. Amen. Yeah, thank you. What I got you can't buy.
It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the earth.